Hey everyone, this is Disk Junkie, and uh, finally back to do what you've probably all been waiting for, which is a overview video uh, of the new DVD room or DVD section, I guess you could call it. Thought I'd just pan out for a bit and show you what it looks like. Now that I've actually installed a brand new light, I actually bought it at a uh, at a flea market, and it only cost me 30 Swedish crowns, which is nothing and uh, it sort of feels like a weird sort of alien spaceship lamp or something so yeah uh, but that's that and uh, this is the uh, DVD corner DVD section uh, which is uh, basically part of the uh, part of the living room so yeah this is the living room in case you don't remember what the new place looks like uh, and then this is the DVD movie corner and um, as you can tell here I've basically gotten everything in place um, there's a, a bit of stuff on the floor there which I haven't exactly found a place for or I'm having some trouble uh, figuring out what to do with it enough about that I'm not gonna talk so much uh, you know like go into detail uh, about things uh, rather just gonna do like an overview going through the shelves sort of show you you know what goes where and and such so uh, feel free to leave comments questions whatever and I'll answer them as per my usual routine first of all my favorite place in the whole wide world uh, the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre section as you can see I actually decided to give this uh, its very own uh, sort of large style shelf um, you know, I'm really into uh, videotapes at the moment. I've been buying a lot of uh, a lot of VHS editions for this movie. Got all of the uh, Japanese versions here, which are just uh, just some of my favorite favorite uh, video versions of the movie. It's just you know, I'm, I tried to you know sort of display stuff, sort of give a bit of a variety to the covers. Uh, so you know, just not just based on rarity, but Try to get a nice sort of feeling going. <laughs> and this has absolutely nothing to do with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's just something I put on the shelf temporarily because I didn't have a place to put it when I was standing here. I'm like, ah, oh, I gotta put, oh, put it there. Here is, uh, you know, some laser discs, uh, some larger items. Um, and, uh, well, I don't know. I tried to uh, keep myself occupied when it comes to Texas Chainsaw. So, here is also actually a brand new poster for Texas Chainsaw, but I'm ah, I'm gonna discuss this in a later video. I'm just gonna just gonna leave this. Have you wondering a bit? So yeah, but it's a, it's a very unique poster indeed. Now I'm gonna open these doors, and top shelf here is you know I have to admit uh, a bit crowded. Uh, you know just random stuff laying out there. Uh, but as far as the rest goes, this is all Texas Chainsaw. Uh, and I am, of course, talking about the original film from 1974 uh, and none of the sequels or remakes or whatnot. Um, these are all videotapes, um, but below here I have all of my uh, DVD slash Blu-ray editions, which, you know, obviously range from, uh, you know, places all around the world. Uh, you know, <laughs> being as it's so many, I guess you probably figure that out, but hey. Uh, and just at the bottom here, I got a couple of, uh, you know, got my Nintendo and a couple of games. They're sort of stacked away so you can't see them all, but yeah, it was just a perfect space with the right height to fit that in. Next up, I'm just gonna close this, move over to uh, what I guess would be like the retro section. Um, and uh, this is. Uh, it's basically just a bunch of videotapes because I'm really into videotapes now with you know sort of like the vintage style sort of big box uh, beautiful clamshells and whatnot um, you know this is a it's a bunch of different stuff from different countries um, you know I just I'm really into the whole uh, you know I, I just I love cover design but you know that about me um, and uh, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. You know, there's obviously some of the stuff like this here. This is a uh, Super 8 
uh, film, 8mm copy uh, of Helter Skelter. In case you're wondering, well, what the hell is that square thing? It's a, it's a Super 8, Super 8 film version. And down here we have uh, some like sort of new VHS editions, like these, like, like House of the Devil and stuff like that. Which you know, it's it's made to look like vintage style boxes, but they're actually films that have been produced recently. So decided to keep some of that stuff sort of on the same shelf, except for this one, which is actually a uh, very old Swedish Betamax version of um, the the Amityville Horror, James Brolin and and Margot Kidder and. And whatnot. Then we got some phantasm stuff down here, and the squares uh, on either side here are also uh, Super 8, Super 8 film, and last row uh, some more VHS tapes and beta and, and stuff. Uh, then at the bottom here, I got some more videotapes stashed away, which you know, I just don't really have place for them. I figured I might put in an extra shelf, uh, you know, so I can line them up horizontally rather than having them stacked like this but that's a future project I haven't really decided also uh, you probably know this already but this is a this is actually an old doorway in case you didn't notice uh, and the the shelves here are obviously plate glass and there's also a, a plate glass uh, behind here but you know if you look closely you can actually see through it so that's the hallway in the house, so it makes for, for a very nice effect. I really like the way it, you know, gives you uh, different depth and field of vision. You know, you can sort of see stuff uh, through the through the shelves, which is really cool. Moving on to the big shelf, you can just start from the top. And I thought we would actually go just look at the top shelf here uh, for starters, just from left to right. Uh, and you know, it's just a bunch of different stuff and this is usually uh, like you know DVDs, Blu-rays and you know not, not so much vintage stuff anymore I decided to keep most of that in the same place uh, or part of the collection <laughs> the orange box it I, there's no thought behind putting it there I just didn't know what the fuck to do with it so it ended up there because I didn't want it on the floor so yeah going back to this side here's some more retro stuff and this is very mixed uh, as you can tell, you know, I got a got some vintage toys, and uh, you know, an old Metroid NES game. It's actually a rental clamshell uh, from Sweden, and then I got the Lost Season Five kit in the background. So it's a very mixed mixed shelf here. But I really wanted to go with vintage feel r rather than going with uh, particular, you know, formats or cases or whatever. So I don't know, I just you know, felt like doing a themed thing, just like vintage stuff. Uh, and then I also decided to put the heart box editions here, because, you know, they usually have a very vintage look about them, so I sort of, you know, I sort of felt that they fit in and fitted nicely into this, this part of the collection. Next up, we have uh, some of my Christopher Nolan stuff, uh, starting here at the bottom with some of the more luxurious sets and moving up here's also a few others uh, alongside uh, well yeah basically <laughs> basically a bunch, bunch of stuff which I've probably talked about uh, a lot before uh, and at the top here are the the rest of my Christopher Nolan collection it's basically you know just stacked because I, I obviously can't display everything so no point in trying really. This is the new Matrix section uh, which basically you know a lot of it's just taken up by this this uh, toy which you know not much for toys usually but if you call if you recall I bought this uh, really cheap so I really wanted to display it somehow and decided to you know well why not like put all my Matrix DVDs and Blu-rays and whatnot in the same place uh, and of course I got the Matrix ship right about it so you know always trying to keep a bit of a you know a bit of a connection between where stuff is actually placed next up is the Coen Brothers uh, Coen Brothers section which you know has everything from like Fargo to Big Lebowski and uh, of course uh, No Country for Old Men 
really awesome film and this is a, it's actually a promotional uh, coin uh, for No Country. If I turn it over you can see that it actually says No Country for Old Men uh, on DVD and Blu-ray uh, and we got the date there. So I actually got this from a bought it on eBay but it comes from like a, it's like a video store only promo thing which you know, I just really like weird stuff like that it's it's fun next up this is the Tarantino section which you know I've sort of had before but looks a bit different being as it's a bit more crowded and just take some stuff out so you can see what's actually in here but yeah I'm not gonna give you too much detail. Next up is a um, uh, <laughs> corner which I decided to uh, devote to the movie The Collector. Uh, not that I'm like an extreme fan of this movie, I thought it was decent, um, but the reason why I you know, made this display thing is just, you know, I bought this, which is uh, actually a screen used prop from the movie, like one of these stunt bear traps. Um, and I figure, you no, know, I just recently watched the sequel, uh, which is just called The Collection. And, you know, it was sort of, I don't know, I felt like it was, you know, the first one is probably better, but, you know, I still kind of like the second one. Uh, so I figured I might get, like, a collector's edition of that and put on the other side just for, you know, just for symmetry, I guess. <laughs> as far as the tape goes, this has nothing to do with anything. I just, I don't know why this is here. I think I was packaging something and left it on the shelf for some reason. Moving up here is the Dexter uh, section, which you know uh, has all of my my lovely, lovely Dexter stuff, uh, ranging from the uh, uh, the Ice Truck Killer doll, which I made myself uh, from one of the uh, exact same uh, type of dolls, like it's the exact same model as the one they used for the series. Uh, so you know, I just I just remade it. It's uh, basically a prop replica made from the, the same version they used. So, yeah, this is about as close as you can get uh, without actually owning the original prop from original prop from the series. So, yeah, I just I love it, uh, and I actually have one of those for sale. Anyway, then we got the blood slides box, of course, and I reviewed this. So, if you want to know details about it, just. Uh, just search for uh, for Disc Junkie uh, Dexter Blood Slides Box or something. Uh, and this is the, the one from Michael Cosentino, by the way, uh, in case you have trouble finding the right video. There's also a certificate in the back here, which I haven't really displayed before, but thought you might like to see it. I don't know if this is focusing right. But yeah. So that's the story behind that. In case you wanted to know. Moving up, here is uh, my Frank Darabont section. Um, you know, he hasn't made a, a whole bunch of movies, but um, you know, I'm not, I, I know I don't have everyone. I'm missing a few of his early works as well as well as uh, the Walking Dead series isn't in here. But yeah, just decided to put some of my some of my Frank Darabont stuff together there. Then we have the Minority Report. Uh, section, which you know, one of these things I always have to keep uh, together, as it's you know uh, some of the stuff that really got me into collecting in the first place, and uh, you know it's just I don't know it's just just some of my most prized uh, releases uh, and items for the collection. So yeah, I just. You know, couldn't go without uh, displaying them. You know, it just wouldn't work. Here is uh, my Watchmen stuff, and um, it's weird because most of this stuff is actually stuff that I received for free from like fans and subscribers. Uh, I think that this is actually the only one I actually bought. Uh, but no, it's just weird because I keep looking at it like, why the fuck do I own so much Watchmen stuff? And then I'm like, oh yeah. People gave it to me. That's <laughs> that's really cool to to realize that every time I look at it. Next up, uh, here is some more Texas Chainsaw stuff, but this is the uh, remake part of the collection, uh, as well as you know I got a couple of the uh, sequels there, even though I'm not a big fan. And uh, then we get to my David Fincher stuff. This isn't all of it. I'm gonna 
get back to that in a minute, but uh, there's some, just you know, some of the stuff which I decided to display. Uh, then we have some predator slash alien stuff. Just decided to display it in a way that I felt looked appealing to the eye. There's not a not a whole thought going on as to where the stuff is, if that makes any sense. Then we got some more alien stuff, and as you can tell, here I decided to put like everything. If it's alien, it just goes in there. I mean, this is a Super 8 copy of the film, <laughs> or well, uh, it's actually just selected scenes, 17 minutes worth. So it's not a film film, but it's a, it's a very abridged uh, version basically and of course we got some more alien stuff above it so like I said always trying to keep things together to give it a connection between the different shelves then at the end here we got my uh, natural born killers uh, editions uh, also one of those movies which I always love to pick up uh, new stuff for um, and uh, yeah I don't know it's actually quite a bunch of stuff in here actually just stacked a bunch of these uh, rare versions because you know I just uh, you know, I just don't have a I don't have two wide shelves this time so just you know sometimes you have to cram stuff in but yeah I, I do my best here is some of the stuff which uh, I don't know sort of like meat blood blood pack uh, blood pack stuff and I don't know more like feeling of uh, you know, a bunch of these promotional items which are like blood related. We got some true blood bottles and of course these weird meat pack uh, kind of cases. So I don't know, it's it's a weird section, but blood, meat, slaughter, stuff, gore. You know, that's sort of the thought that went into putting this little thing together. And then, uh, last but not least here, we have my David Lynch uh, section. Uh, or part of it actually, so uh, yeah, just a, just a bit of stuff in here. Thing is, and that's what I wanted to mention with uh, about the Fincher stuff, that the David Lynch and Fincher stuff, I had, you know, a lot more of that before, uh, but then I sort of had uh, everything on display basically, but now I just decided to put some of the stuff up here, and then right in the shelf below here, I put the rest. So there I got the rest of the David Fincher stuff, and on the other side, I got the rest of the David Lynch uh, editions. So yeah, so I think that worked out pretty pretty good. Then here we have, I don't know, just some various movies, uh, some duplicates, uh, like when I buy uh, more than one copy of the same film, or if I have like, uh, you know, some favorite directors and stuff, I decided to put some of that together, sort of keep track of you know, where stuff is. Then, you know, we get to this this shelf, which is basically just, I don't know, a bunch of stuff that doesn't fit in anywhere, or uh, some stuff that's for sale. Uh, not all this is for sale, but but some of the stuff I decided to put here because it's for sale, just trying to weed stuff out, I guess. And at the bottom, here are, uh, you know, uh, my Kubrick, Kubrick films. Uh, I don't know why, I just, you know, I wanted to keep, like, director's sections and whatnot. And then just, I don't, know, ran I don't even know what this stuff is. Random stuff. It's beginning at the wrong part of the shelf here, because this is like the whole blah, sort of random, not very sorted section. So I guess that should be at the end. Bear with me, I, it's getting better, better, I guess. Here are uh, uh, my very few Blu-rays, like Blu-ray keep cases. Uh, also, you know, it's one of those sections which isn't which isn't, isn't extremely uh, well organized, I can't say. Here are more stuff. Bunch of District 9 editions. And uh, I've got some CDs here, I don't know what they're doing here. Uh, here is something like, uh, sort of like a future project. These are my uh, uh, horror movies, or rather found footage. Films. I'm a big, big fan of the found footage uh, genre when it comes to um, comes to uh, horror movies. So I felt that in the future I would like to do a specific section just for that. Uh, but at the time, you know, I don't have so much. So I just stacked that up there. That's why that's sort of an individual pile. Then we got some more stuff. I don't even know what this is. Oh yeah, this is like some 
had a bunch of mixed DVDs, but some of it's like very old screen or copies and whatnot. I don't know, a lot of these boxes here are just put here because I couldn't find a good place for them because they're too big or they don't really fit in or whatever. Then I got some of my, you know, got my Seinfeld DVDs, uh, Friends box set. Um, basically just like TV shows and stuff which yeah, I'm not too keen on displaying, it's just more like storage space down here I guess. Then we get to the middle section here I guess, which is also a lot of sort of stuff just crammed in here. An office space box set alongside with some other office space uh, memorabilia and whatnot. Uh, Indiana Jones stuff, and I actually have more Indiana Jones stuff behind it um, I think, yes I do. Uh, and then at the bottom here, a Sean Wook Park section. Not much for section, but yeah, I do have all my Sean Wook Park films uh, right in the back here. It's actually pretty pretty deep um, bookshelf, so so to speak. I haven't really had this depth uh, before, so I guess that's a relief because you can really hide stuff uh, way in the back if you want to. Uh, these, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, everything up to the uh, middle shelf there. Uh, this is actually like all of my, um, basically like the rest, I guess, which is, you know, digi packs, keep cases, uh, collector's editions uh, for the most part, because that's usually uh, all that I buy. I actually decided to go alphabet on these, which I usually don't do, but uh, this is actually all alphabetized. And, well, I guess I could just give you a bit of a pan, even though you might not be able to read everything. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, uh, I usually don't want to wanna do the whole uh, alphabet thing, but it felt like a bit of a relief, because then I just didn't have to think about where to put certain editions, I could just sort of put everything in here. Um, just put everything in, in the alphabetized order. So I didn't really have to you know, make choices. I can just sort it in there. So uh, yeah, I mean I guess this is pretty much it. Uh, you know, once I've gotten through just browsing these uh, these alphabetized editions. But um, it's always hard showing your collection, but you know I did want to show you uh, like an overview because I've done this a couple of times before, and now that I've sort of reorganized everything, I wanted to give you a nice sort of uh, overview to give you a full spectra uh, of the collection as it is today. Uh, because you know, over time, you know, things does does change and you know I do buy more stuff even though it's uh, not as much as I as I used to uh, I mean uh, not at least not in terms of um, buying DVDs uh, because you know uh, at this particular point in time uh, I do buy a whole lot of uh, VHS editions I'm very into the whole um, you know all the, all the vintage stuff all the VHS tips I really really and I just just love these this vintage shit. That's just like it's what I'm all about now. Uh, old VHS tapes. But that's it for this overview video. Really hope you enjoyed this. Getting to see the collection as it is now. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And as usual, I hope to see you all next time.